everybody, I'm Allie, and this is my YNR chat vlog for Sunday, December 6th. And the week started off with everyone in Genoa City essentially getting served with a subpoena. It was like Oprah week. You get served, and you're getting served, and you're getting served. Um, it was kind of funny, and it got me to thinking, um, of if I was a process server and I was looking for really creative ways to serve my clients, uh, such as the one Daniel got, what I would do is I would arrange for the person to get tickets onto the prices right, and then I would also arrange for them to get called down onto contestants' row and to get chosen to play the game and to win their games and to make it all the way to the final round, and then they would win the final showcase, and then I would arrange arrange for Drew Carey to hand them their subpoena. <laughs> Luckily, it doesn't really matter if you get subpoenaed in Genoa City because all you really have to do is plead the Fifth Amendment. <laughs> Um, so basically, Ryder and Deacon pleaded their Fifth Amendment, didn't answer any questions to the grand jury, um, and unfortunately, if Daniel just would have done the same thing, if he would have followed Michael's advice and pleaded the Fifth Amendment, he probably wouldn't have been arrested. There would have been nothing for them to go on. Um, so it just basically goes to show that everyone should always listen to Michael, always take Michael's advice, he's always right. Um, okay, first of all, Ryder is a complete liar. Um, he opened up to Kevin and Daniel really early in the week. Um, he was kind of starting to give more information about what happened in the alley. He swore to Kevin right before going into the courtroom that he was going to do everything he could to make sure that Daniel wasn't implicated in the murder and be charged with something he didn't do. And then he turned right around and took his Fifth Amendment uh, 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 right. I mean, who is his lawyer anyway, by the way? Like, who even advised him to do that? So he stood there, didn't say anything, and unfortunately, I think that that... that that probably was the nail in the in the in the case for uh, for Daniel. All right. Second of all, um, if Michael was going to kind of blackmail Heather, um, I wonder why why did he blackmail her for information about what Ryder and Deacon said in the hearing instead of blackmailing her for something helpful like bail for Daniel? You know, I don't know. I thought that was kind of interesting and. Um, and what about Daisy? What is, what is her whole uh, connection here? What's the connection to Ryder? How does she fit into the story? I sort of get the impression that it's possible that they could be brother and sister. I don't know. Um, I have this theory, and it's based on absolutely nothing. It's just an instinct. I just have this instinct that Daisy is Lauren's daughter. I don't know why. Does anybody else get that vibe? Um, I don't know. I'm curious to know what all of your theories are on exactly how Daisy fits into this uh, whole picture. So definitely leave me a comment and let me know uh, what you think about all of that. And finally, I just wanted to mention... Um, said it in a while, but I just wanted to say that Daniel it was looking really, really good this week. He's a hot, hot guy, and I thought he was looking really, really good this week, so I wanted to give him some vlog loving. Uh, <laughs> so uh, so there, there it is. Love to Daniel for his hotness. And also, I just had to mention what was up with Amber's hair at the beginning of the week. Like, okay, it was crimped. I know you all saw it, because it was unmistakable. Thinkable. It was crimped, like, all the way. And I just, I, you know, I don't mean to be mean, and I'm not, like, a fashionista, but if you just, okay, here's a reminder. If you ever get, like, a wild, crazy feeling that you're going to go crimp your hair, like, okay, don't crimp it from the root down <laughs> because it just ends up looking like a frizzy, horrible mess. Like, maybe if you want to crimp a few strands, okay, we'll get the, we'll get the crimp effect, but we don't need to see your whole head crimped, okay? <laughs> Well, Victoria's testimony about Daniel being a good guy didn't really seem to count for much, and how nice of her husband to stick with her and stay with her at the courthouse while she was giving this testimony. Um, so what exactly is up with JT? What, what is going on here? I, 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 I think that there is a lot more to whatever's going on with him and his job and his boss than meets the eye. I don't think it's just that they want in on the Chancellor IPO. Um, I get an evil vibe from the boss, honestly, and I'm kind of disappointed that JT is being such a tool for him. I mean, he ignored his own son's birthday party this week, so what's up with that, JT? I mean, Victoria has definitely had her moments where she was not the world's best wife and she was completely and utterly selfish and focused on her business, but I always got the sense that she was at least there for her husband and her family. I mean, for JT to miss his child's birthday party, I don't know. Um, I don't know. It's it's only recently that there's been this horrible rift between JT and Victoria.
Victoria. Um, and uh, but you know, and I can understand where JT would be upset. I mean, Victoria slept with Deacon, but let's not forget, um, JT was caught kissing Colleen before Victoria ever even slept with Deacon. So I don't know. Uh, let me know your thoughts about that. I'm curious to know if anyone has any theories. And by the way, it's been like weeks since we've seen Deacon in a sex scene. Can we get somebody on that, please? Well, Jack finally got his wish this week, um, and he got in on the Chancellor stock. Of course, he had to play the dead father card with Catherine um, to do it. Um, it was a, it was a good, great moment actually between Catherine and Jack um, when Jack handed her the letter from John. Um, you know, it was it was unfortunate though because I just felt like. Jack was really kind of pulling a dirty trick in a way. Um, you know, it's Jack knows how to tug on Catherine's heartstrings, and that's exactly what he did. And I really liked the moment uh, where Catherine just looked at him and said, you know, Jack, you don't play fair. Well, Chance got a Medal of Honor this week for getting stabbed. <laughs> um, it was good. It was good. He, Chance looks very good in a uniform. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it was very sweet. He got his little medal, and he made sure that Chloe, he, they had a, a sequence uh, where Chance bought Chloe a dress to go with him to the ceremony, and he wanted her to be by his side, and uh, he was getting pictures taken for the press, and um, rather than be alone in the pictures, he wanted to have Chloe right beside him. He's such a good guy. Um, I just, I, I really like them together. They're very, very sweet, and Chloe is, seems to really be over Billy now, and it's just, so it's just been, it's really been really sweet to, to see them together interacting. Um, it, it, it makes me have a, a, a very warm feeling in my heart. Sharon and Adam had sex! I'm shocked! No way, I'm not shocked. Sharon sleeps with everyone. At first, I have to admit, I thought it was a little hot. Um, it was so unexpected and naughty. Um, but then, in the middle of having sex, Adam blurts out to Sharon, I love you. And Sharon, Sharon was just completely shocked. I mean, she like pulled herself back from the sex and just kind of went, uh. <laughs> it was so unattractive. Like, I, I would have liked it more, honestly, if I thought that Adam was using Sharon. But being a wimpy dude that says, I love you after knowing a woman for three weeks and saying it during sex, Ick. I mean, ick. I, uh, I don't know. Now it's awkward between <laughs> Sharon and Adam. There's no way of getting around it. It's awkward. And frankly, Sharon dug her own grave on this. You know, if she's feeling uncomfortable now, she should have thought about that before she went and slept with the man that she's known for only three weeks. I don't know. I... I just think Sharon needs the attention. She has to have constant attention from a man. I mean, clearly, that's who she is. But... What about Adam, you know? I mean, does he really love Sharon or think he loves Sharon? I don't know, you know? Or is he using her completely? You know, or, you know, I guess my opinion is that it's a little bit of both. I mean, I think she, I think Adam actually is kind of falling in love with Sharon. It doesn't hurt that it's uh, his, his uh, nemesis brother's ex-wife and he wants to get back at him. So, I don't know, I don't know. Um, at the end of, of, of the week, uh, Friday show, Nick basically walked in, completely walked in on uh, Aaron and, er, Sharon and Adam. I couldn't even believe it. I, you know, I, I, I can't believe, first of all, that Nick would walk into Sharon's house, let alone her bedroom, where there's sexy Spanish music playing inside. You know, oh my goodness. You know, come on, Nick, take the hint. Um, you know, first, Nick has the nerve to put up a commemorative uh, plate in honor of uh, the child that, she, that he and Sharon lost, and now he's going to be warning her not to get involved with his sleazy ex-con half-brother. How rude! Okay, well those are my thoughts for this week. I can't wait to hear what all of you guys are thinking, so please leave me a comment and let me know your thoughts about all of the storylines this week. I love hearing from you. Um, I will be back next Sunday for another vlog, but if you want to check up on me in the meantime, you can go to my website at buttonhead.org. Otherwise, I will see you guys next week. Have a good one. Bye!